Hi all, welcome to my channel. Today I will discuss about how I cleared AWS SysOps certification with 3 weeks preparation. I will share my experiences and the steps that helped me in clearing the exam. I will talk about the materials I used, the practice tests I gave along with the scores. I will also tell you about the specific topics and areas where I got questions. I hope you will find this discussion very useful in your preparations for AWS SysOps certification exam. And I'm sure you already know about this exam. It's a 180 minute exam. There will be around 51-52 questions plus 3 hands-on labs. And you need 72% score for passing the certification. And let me tell you these labs are not very difficult. I prepared for around 3 weeks starting from February 5th. And I gave the exam on February 27th. That is approximately 23 days. I was able to spend 2-3 hours on the weekdays and 4-5 to five hours on the weekend days. Now about the materials I used for preparation. For most of my certification preparations, I used slide deck from Stefan Marek as the basic reading material. I bought his course but I did not attend his video lectures. Slides are good enough. You can download the slides if you have bought the course. So it covers most of the important topics. What I usually do is I go through this slide once and then start taking the practice test. I bought the practice test by Stephen Marek and I found it very useful. It was kind of very close to the actual exam. I started giving the practice test after I went through the slide deck once. And after giving each of the practice tests, I analyzed the answers. I found out where I went wrong. What was the reason for that? I made notes about the key learnings. And I'll show you my notes. I wanted to show you the notes which I prepared. It has some 24 pages. I have used some color coding as well to indicate the keywords. When I went through the slides, I prepared the notes. And later, after each practice test, after analyzing the answers also, I updated these notes. These are written in shorthand. So if somebody else go through this, they may not understand. These are kind of reminders. And I can tell you that from these notes, I got at least some 30 plus questions. I'm not saying those questions are directly recorded here. That is not the point. But the key points mentioned here were covered by some 30 plus questions. Basically, my point is that creating such notes is going to be very useful, especially a couple of days before your exam, when you have to revise all those points which you have learned. Okay, that's about my notes which I prepared. Let's move on. As with my other certification preparations, I used the practice test as the most important activity in my preparations. When you take practice tests, that will give you idea about your weak areas, the common mistakes you make, and if there are any time management issues. This experience of this practice test will improve your ability to understand what exactly the question is asking for and your ability to pick the keywords from the question, which is very critical. Now let me show you the practice test I have taken and the scores I got. I started with the slides and after a week, I gave my first practice test and I scored 56%. And as you can see, I failed in that practice test. But of course, I continued with my preparations. I analyzed the answers. And on day 11, I gave the official sample questions. So I'm talking about the 10 questions which are given as a PDF format in the certification page itself. So these questions are from AWS and I got 6 out of 10 correct. So that was on day 11 and on day 15, I gave the second practice test and this time I was close to passing the exam. I got 71 percentage. I analyzed the answers and I continued with my preparation. And on day 19, when I took the third practice test, I got 73 percentage. And on day 20, I took the official practice test, which is available in Skill Builder. And I scored 80 percentage, 16 out of 20. That was a good score. And on day 23, when I gave the actual exam, I scored 829 out of 1000. So close to 83 percentage. So you can see that my highest score was in the actual certification exam. And that was the case for my other AWS certifications as well, which is a good thing. Also, based on my observation and past experience, if you are able to score 60 to 65 percentage in the official practice test given in Skill Builder, then you can go ahead and 
give this exam and you can easily pass passing score is 72 percentage but i'm saying that in the official practice test if you are able to score 60 to 65 percentage in the final exam you can score more than 72 percentage easily that is based on experience now let me tell you how my exam day went now regarding my experience on the exam day i got 51 questions and three labs i think that is the same for most of the test takers in the first pass i took 64 minutes and i flagged 15 questions including six unanswered questions there were five multiple answer questions which means these questions had more than one answer and really long questions were just five i flagged most of these questions in the first pass and by 90 minutes i completed my second pass and closed to the mcq part of the exam and you need to remember that once you close the mcq part you cannot come back to that so you need to be absolutely sure by this point and the three labs took 60 minutes lab environment was not very convenient to work with so please ensure that you get some practice using the practice lab environment which will be sent to you by peers and view though i had practiced still i was not very comfortable with the lab environment most likely because this is the first time you are doing the practical exam for aw certification and please claim extra allowance of 30 minutes if you are eligible i had done that yeah, if i compare the three associate exams based on their difficulty i think sa associate is the easiest and developer associate is the difficult one and of course SOPS is somewhere in the middle now i'll give you a few suggestions or tips regarding how to prepare for the exam you can think about it consider this and if you think it is going to work for you you can also do the same i already mentioned this you can make notes as you learn a 15 to 20 page word document towards the end of your preparation time that will be really helpful for revising the concepts before your exam and i would suggest that if there are long questions maybe you can skip all those long questions and multiple answer questions without even reading because if you read it and spend two minutes and then you are skipping it you have already lost that two minutes so usually i adopt this strategy unless in the first look itself i get a feel that okay this is an easy question and i can answer that take 30 minutes extra if applicable i already mentioned that target to complete the mcq part by 90 minutes so that you get enough time for your labs and for sysops i can tell you that questions are not very long hence it is possible to complete by 90 minutes and there are only 51 questions unlike the other exams where you have 65 questions and of course learn from your mistakes in the practice exams and add all those learnings to your notes now regarding the exam labs you will get three labs and let me tell you about the labs which i got i got three labs as i mentioned one was about creating a cloudwatch custom metric and to filter errors with status code equal to 500 and you have to notify that in sns again the steps are given for the lab you just need to execute those steps so you need to know how to create the filter how to use sns etc then the second one was about the web application firewall how to create various types of rules there were multiple different types of rules which were mentioned you need to practice that then creation of sport fleet plus event bridge rule and you have to initiate an ssm automation so if you look at this it may look very complex but it is not that complex just ensure that you get your hands-on experience in creating each of these that is sufficient and i will try to create a video on sysops exam labs and once i create it i will add the link in the description of this video now regarding the key topic areas where i got questions in the exam i have listed the various topics and areas where i got the questions you can also expect questions from these areas i will not be discussing the answers i will just hint at the topics or how the question was framed etc and once you get an idea about the topics you can go back and read and be prepared for the exam okay let's go through the list so these are the areas where i got questions from i am giving the bullet points and i am not discussing the answers all these bullet points actually indicate the questions which i got in my exam so i'll quickly go through it Anyway, you can pause the video and read through it and then you can take your notes. So there was a question about the same AMI won't work in two regions. So a question related to that. If you know that concept, you will be able to answer. 
Then what steps you can take to reduce the interruptions in your support fleet? What are the various things you can do? So basically, when you make a support fleet request, you can include multiple launch specifications that vary by instance type, availability zone, etc. So that your availability of support instances will be high. Again, let me not discuss the answers. Then there was RDS encrypted data is copied to a second region. To unencrypt, you have to use AWS KMS key from the second region or the first region. A question related to that. Then question about usage of cost allocation tags and tag editor. Then a question on use case related to AWS config. You should know what AWS config is used for. Then another one on CloudFront can be used with application load balancer or network load balancer. You can find out that. You have a web app hosted on-premise. How to improve or reduce the latency? So what are the various levers available to us? So a question on each of these topics. Then on route 53, there were two questions about one about weighted routing and another one about geolocation based routing. How CloudFront can block access based on location of the requester? There was another question related to that. Then regarding EFS mount target on each availability zone, there was a question related to that as well. Then there was a question about a shared VPC, a participant account created EC2s in the shared VPC, but it hit the instance limit. So the question was who has to request for increasing the limit, participant account or the owner of the shared VPC. And block public access is removed for the S3 bucket, but still you are not able to access the static website. So what change need to be made in the bucket policy, whether you have to give access only to the bucket or you have to specifically indicate that you have to give access to the objects. Then S3 lifecycle policy related question was there. For best performance, how to handle the lifecycle movement of your objects. Regarding multi-part upload, there was a question, which API you will use, put object or copy object? None of these questions are direct questions. But what I'm indicating here is the key topic which is being tested in that question. Then cached full copy of data required on premise. So you, will you use storage gateway stored volume or cached volume? That was another question. RDS reads suffer from latency. There were a couple of questions related to that, two or three questions related to that. In this particular question, it was asking about there are no frequently accessed data, which solution you will use, Elastic Cache or Read Replica. Then a question related to the difference between Redis and Memcached. If you know the difference, you will be able to answer. Regarding RDS proxy, there was a question about potential reasons for Lambda connection errors. Then a question related to Aurora backtracking. Another question, there are many reads which slow down DB engine. What is the solution? Again, if you know about the concepts of read replicas, Elastic Cache, etc., you will be able to answer. And you also need to keep in mind that if you use Elastic Cache, it also requires you to make changes to application code. So it is not very efficient. So that point was also tested in one of the questions. And how to increase the capacity of Memcached so that evictions can be reduced. If the EC2 is uncontactable, what corrective action can be taken? One account shares a service catalog with another account. So what can the second account do? That was another question. Regarding Amazon Inspector, there was a question. Can it find S3 with public access and remediate that? A straightforward question about egress only internet gateway. It is about IPv6. I remember getting the same question, similar question in SA Associate exam as well. Then a status check failed system versus status check failed instance. So you should know the difference between these two to answer a question. Question related to cloud formation stack sets, which can be used across regions or across accounts. There was one question. Then a use case related to LDAP in AWS. Then there was a question about CloudWatch synthetics. If you know what is CloudWatch synthetics, you can answer that. Another question dealt with the difference between S3 access logs versus cloud trade. Then Elastic Beanstalk upgrade methods. Which methods ensure full system availability during the upgrade? You should know that. There was a question related to CFN init and signal. And there was another question where you have to use your knowledge about ELB's active connection count metric, which can be used to auto scale the application EC2s. Then difference between personal health dashboard and the service health dashboard. There was one question related to that. And a question related to SSL connection from CloudFront to on-prem origin server. There was a question about Glacier Vault Worm or Write Once Read Mini. There was one question. Another one on Compute Optimizer. Straightforward question. 
Then can we use compute savings plan for Fargate? Another question on that. There was one question which was testing your understanding about global accelerator versus CloudFront distribution. Then SQS, there was a question, how to migrate from standard queue to FIFO queue? Basically, the question was not about how to migrate, but it was about one specific aspect of that migration. So if you have read about this topic, you will be able to answer that. Then questions related to even bridge cron expressions and rate expressions. That was also included. So these were some of the key areas from where I got questions. Please ensure that you go through these topics which I just listed. I'm sure you will get a good number of questions from these areas. I would suggest that you set a 30 day deadline for completing your certification exam and take that deadline so seriously as if you are going to give your final university exam. Many a times because there is no stringent deadline, people keep postponing the exam and finally for many of them, they will just forget about it after some time. And unlike other AWS exams, this one has practical labs. So you should definitely practice some hands-on exercises and it will help in passing that lab exam part and also it will help in better retention of some of the key facts which will help in the MCQ part as well. You can easily pass the CISO certification exam if you are able to spend two to three hours per day for around three weeks. And once you complete the exam, I'll be very happy if you can add comments here and give your inputs to future test takers. You can mention about your experiences, what went right, the preparation materials which you used, the areas from where you have got questions. And also you can mention whether this video really helped you or not. And this information will be very useful for other test takers. If you have any questions for me, please add in the comments. I wish you all the very best for your exam. I'll be back with another video. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Bye.